Hi, my name is Salman Godus. Uh, I'm playing for the Iranian national team and uh, Brentford Football Club. And you are listening to Gold Bezan podcast. <laughs> اشکان میفرسته تو پا برگشتش حالا قدوس بوم 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 آتش بازی پایان نداره برای پسران ایرانی گل پنجم رو سامان قدوس میزنه ایران پنج یمن سف اینا دیگه کیان فورسن ایتس ا فرست تایم بول پلی ثرو ایتس گوداس هی میکس ایت 2 1 سامان گوداس گتس اف دی مارک فور برنتفورد ایتس هیز First for the club. Oh, and that's a fine finish from Saman Godos. This time in Buebo turned provider. And it was Godos with the finish. Hello and welcome to Global Zam Podcast. My name is Arya Aloverdi. I'm joined by my good friend, Pejman Pars. How are you doing, man? Hi, Arya. Nice to be back once again on this awesome pod. Let's do it. Very good. It's a pleasure to be joined by Iran national team and Benford star, someone called Dus, someone who we previously interviewed uh, on two occasions, one podcast and one article. Someone, we appreciate your time. Uh, thanks for coming on Global Zone Podcast again. Thank you for having me. To our listeners, we thank you for your fan questions. We will try to ask as many as possible. If we didn't ask your question, it's because he's already answered it in one of the previous interviews. Also, برای شنوندگان فارسی زبان این گفتگو در زبان انگلیسی اجرا میشه و البته امیدوارم و خوشحال میشم اگر رسانه های محترم در زبان فارسی گفتگو رو ترجمه کنن در سایتشون. خیلی ممنون میشم. Someone first question we have for you uh, regarding what you told us. You mentioned that you want to play in a top league, like the Bundesliga, La Liga, the Premier League. Your dream came true. You're now in that top league. What is your dream now? Yeah, so my, my dream has always been to play in the best leagues in the world. And yeah, I'm really happy to, to be here now. But the first one I have to have is to get more to get more minutes. Uh, because right now I'm struggling. I'm fighting to, to get a spot in the team. Uh, I'm, I'm never happy with the situation of not playing. So... Of course, I need to fight more and try to prove myself better and better. And so r- right now, the goal is to to get more minutes and eventually, hopefully, I'm doing good so I can get a starting place. So, someone, uh, you have been struggling to get some minutes in the Premier League, although it's you know, one of the toughest leagues in the world. But w- what do you think is is the key, the need the needs to do to, to get some more minutes? Is it like, you know, work harder, of course? Is it due to the, to the competition? Is it like the relationship with the coach? What needs to be done, in your opinion? It's a bit of everything uh, because we have seven, eight players fighting for three spots and ev- every player, they have their own style. And I, I think uh, because we have a good coach and I think it changed a lot depending on the style he needs for the game. So... For example, against we're playing against Aston Villa. I started that game. I was doing good, but still, the the game after uh, he took me out because tactical reasons. So it's still like for, for me, I'm still trying to fight for whatever reason it is, what, whatever tactical reason. I still want to be that main guy, to be the first one. Every coach chooses, but now we have seven, eight players. It's a really tough competition. in the team so it's up to the coach like whatever whatever he chooses for for me I'm still going to fight to try to be better and better but it's a little bit of everything me fighting better and better fighting harder than the coach choosing for the tactical reasons but it's a bit of everything speak to us shortly about the last season how it was playing in the 
uh, in the championship and now in the Premier League compared to to League One, you know, and also your relationship with with the coach Thomas Frank because you know he he's he had his eyes on you for a long time and you've been like hand picked still. So so what do you make of that? Um, yeah, so Brentford wanted me when I played in League One with Amiens, so that was the one year before I signed for Brentford. And things didn't work. It was a lot of things, but I kept studying in uh, Amiens and then I got suspended for a couple of months. Then Corona happened and it was so many things that were happening. And, and then still Brentford wanted me the year after. And um, we dropped down with Amiens to League Two and I didn't want to play in League Two. And um, Brentford came and of course they still wanted me and I was happy for that. But now the problem started that I didn't have any good preseason uh, because of obviously obvious reasons with the long break from Corona and the season didn't start. And when I came to Brentford, their season had already started and they they had already done their preseason. So I came from nothing. And uh, and when I came, then I needed to stay a couple of days in the hotel of all these restrictions. And I, I think it was a really hard start for me because uh, I came to a new league, new country, new team, and they're already in the middle of their season and I haven't had a good start. So I got a tough start with the team, With I think with the coach. I think he expected much more from me and I expected much more from me and I didn't come to the level that I supposed to be. And uh, it was really frustrating and I, I didn't do good enough. And uh, that's why some games I played and some game, games I didn't play and that I could honestly say it's it was all because of me but I tried to do my best still trying to 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 reach level I should be um I think I didn't do it quick enough at the same time I I'm struggling with adaption from changing the league and changing the country so uh, my first year here in England wasn't that good that I wanted to so um I had some of course I had some good good games but it wasn't good enough speaking about the the promotion to the premier league it must have been a great feeling for yourself of course you know the, the fans at the stadium you know lifting the trophy what what was that like of course you didn't play a lot last season but still being part of that team and being promoted uh, for the history of the club uh, what does that mean to you it was it was an unbelievable feeling um i, I was so happy and because of like for the team and for all the players because I feel so much for the players and the teammates and everyone around. So I was just so happy and to achieve something big like this. But I could be happier because if I would play, I think I would explode. But now I could I could sink it in. It was really easy for me to to understand what we have achieved. But I think yeah. like I don't know how to explain it. Like when we reach Europa League with with Östersund. I think it took me two years to to really understand what we have really achieved. And in emotions, I really exploded because it felt like I was really a part of this. And the difference was when we uh, won the playoffs, I didn't really feel I was a, a part of this. Okay, I was maybe, but I didn't feel it. Right, I understand that. But obviously you're speaking about you know the magnitude of it and being in the Premier League, one of the best leagues in the world. Is there any particular stadium you wish to play in? If I should be honest, like, now I don't know how many games we played, like five, six. Every, every stadium I go to, it's like amazing feeling for me. Like, just to think back where I came from and to see all these amazing stadiums, all the big ones, it's it's like goosebumps to just go inside stadiums. So, But the one I really look forward to is the United away game, the Old Trafford, just because of how classic it is. But every stadium I'm going to right now, it's amazing. Yeah, Salman, you mentioned Östersund. Have you been following them since since you left them? Have you been seeing that they're really struggling now and they have like both financial problems and problems outside of, uh, of the football game, so to speak? I don't follow them like that I watch their games, but I can, I can look at the results and... I'm I'm not happy how how is it going on the pitch and outside the pitch. I'm really sad about it, but uh, I'm not really following them like I did before. No. And shortly, you know, you talk about Premier League and the stadiums, and Premier League is maybe famous for its speed and its 
quality of players is it is it a really big difference compared to like league one in france or maybe other leagues that you know of league one you have at least played in but what's the biggest difference and maybe something that's more similar and something that maybe surprised you nothing really surprised me because i was thinking so highly of premier league but if i compared to league one and championship it's just the intense i could say the championship is it was more intense and the pressure was harder than it than it is in premier league but the quality of players it's it's another level in premier league even though in league one it was amazing players there too but i think overall with everything the tactical bit the the quality of the players and it, all this premier league is that yeah that's why it's the, the best league in the world i think league one the players are amazing that's why premier league like always buy players from league one because they're amazing players but i feel like the tactical bit league one is a bit far away from premier league and lastly on the premier league um one that's quite interesting is we've had obviously jahan bash recently he was playing in brighton of hove albion and we've also had players such as dejar guy was at fulham we've tay morion as well how does that impact you you know the iranians that have played in the premier league you know the, the way they performed how does that impact you as an iranian playing in the in this league yeah it's a motivation of course it's for me it's it's not enough to have four or five players that been playing in premier league i think we have we are good enough to have more than five players so it's just a motivation for me to to show that we can play in the in the best league in the world because we have so good players and yeah the impact is just to motivate me and play as good as for the people for Iranian show that dreams come true and yeah last season you mentioned that obviously you played as, as a number eight, as a, in a three man midfield you're very much playing a little bit deeper than normal this season you're playing as a number 10 essentially for Iran you also play as a number 10 against um, Syria against Iraq you came on the game you play like in a 4-4-2 um, again as a number eight how has this changed your playing style uh, over the years? When you were also soon, you were like a forward line player. You played as a number, as a number nine, or even as a false nine or a winger. How have you, how have you changed your style? Yes, like I said before, uh, it it changed me a lot. Like because before it was just when I, when I played as a number ten in in Sweden, it was just stay in the right space to have the patience and and wait for the ball to come to me and then just do my thing shoot dribble assist just like i could be free and do whatever i like to and do whatever i want to now it's much more disciplined too because now i'm in a more deeper role and it's so important to to be in the right place defensively and one inch wrong and a lot of things can go like in the in a bad place and if you lose the ball in in a bad place then the other teams will punish you especially in premier league where they're so good so one bad thing and you get punished so the style I'm trying it's just to adjust to the situation and um, here i need to be like 100% focused on my toes every game every minute because you will get punished May- maybe it's not the same in like in asia because the teams are not as good as in premier league but it's still the same thing if i play the same position in with iran it's not lose the ball keep the ball do the right things do the right runs it's it's much more runs from the deeper position like in eight to go behind the line compared to the number 10 when you're so yeah. close to to the center backs and all their line there physically do you feel fitter now that you play in this position much more fitter uh, than before uh, i have to we have this test uh, with brentford which one like you have to make it to be able to be to be in the training because if you don't make it they're not allowing you to train so you really need to be fit and because otherwise you're not allowed to train can you just shorten tell us more about that is it like a uh, you have to run a certain meters to in a certain time or what what's the test like yeah so so the test name is 1k so it's 1 kilometers 100 meters 10 times so it's back and forth and uh, before we had a time you had to in championship you had to come in under 318 and in premier league i think you have to come in under 314 and 
I can easily say that's one of the worst tests I've ever done in my life. It sounds <laughs> easy because it's 1K, but after the test, you are dead. Ultimately, you know, it's the most challenging league in the world. So it's not a surprise. You know, it's not a surprise that they have to make you do that, you know, because that's where they see who is going to perform at the highest level. Yeah, yeah. And th- then you have to have a certain fitness to be able to to do it. And that's why we have these tests to, so they can see where we are too. So if they need to push us more in the training, maybe do some more runs after training, under training, because in training, in games, we, we have this GPS. It's like a bra. Maybe you have seen it before. And you have this, they can see everything in this. How much you run, how many sprints, how many sprint meters and everything. So every training, they can see how much we are running and, then they just adjust from that. And is it the same? We're going to come on to the national team now, Pejman will ask, but is it the same in the national team? Is, it, is, that, is that kind of level of monitoring there? And was it there when you were with Carlos Queiroz? It, it was like that with Carlos Queiroz. Yes, it was. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know with Wilmot because I was never there, but yeah. uh, with Scottish, it isn't. It isn't okay. with the GPS. Okay. Uh, yeah. So you just mentioned the uh, Scottish, and we, we can all agree that uh, his credentials, although it's been a long time in Iran, the national team was something new for him and maybe like a big step. But uh, he's won all the games he's managed so far. Maybe games Iran are supposed to be in, to win, but nevertheless, Iran have actually won all the games so far. And you actually have gotten more minutes and playing time with Scottish compared to the time you was with uh, Carlos Queiroz. What's the similarities and the difference between those two coaches, you believe? And, and how is your relationship with, uh, with Dragon? It's a tough question. I, I knew Queiroz a little bit more because I, I was in uh, more camps than I've been with uh, Skocic. I think I've been with Skocic for two or three camps. So I don't know him as good as I did with Queiroz. But what I've seen, he's a good coach and... Uh, is is a lot of tactics in his trainings and in his games. He really likes that, and uh, it's just it, it will be fun to know him more and play games under him. And like you said, I've been playing more with him, and it feels like he trusts me more than Kader trusted me. So I'm happy with that. Yeah, and, wh- and why is that? You think is it because you've been playing more in Europe, or like the 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 new generation of Iranian players coming, or what do you think is the main reason you're getting more playing time? You're just simply good enough or what's changed? I just think I'm much better now than I was one, two years ago. So you can see I'm more mature and you can trust me more in 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 what I'm doing now. I, w- I want to ask you, it's, it's very interesting that you bring that up because obviously Kiroz, he had his he had his players, let's be honest. He had his, his group that he, he trusted and you came in late into the qualification rounds. Uh, and you're obviously playing in the, in the World Cup uh, as a sub. Why do you think Kairos had that? Do you think he had it because he wanted to make sure his players were kind of essentially believing in, in his in his approach? Or was it because maybe you, you weren't ready for it to start matches? Actually, I don't know. I, I don't know how he was thinking. It's hard to say. I was always ready. And you can tell in the training that I always tried to show myself that I, I should play and I, I always done that to show myself that I should starting or play, get more minutes if I come in as a sub. But it's always the coaches uh, that choose who is playing and how much. So I always try to prove myself. And I, I think the the biggest reason right now is that I'm much better and you can trust me more that I do what the coach wants. That's why I'm playing more now than before. It is interesting. And, and I must say, uh, you made a great impact during those times that you played uh, when you got subbed in and you become you became more of a game changer for Iran and everybody's pleased with, with the way you, you played and so are we at uh, Golbezan. Uh, and those games in, in June and August, you know, uh, those uh, qualification games, they were important games for, for Iran and getting one step closer to the World Cup. How did you see those camps Playing, you know, you become friend with, friends with a lot of those Iranian uh, national team players. So uh, how do you see those camps and those games turned out to be? What was something that you could take with you? So so we have a lot of new players now in the national team. They're young and they're hungry. They're, they're motivated. And I think that the players that 
the age is a little bit older, you know, they they can feel the energy they're coming with. So because we had three, four very important games in, in June uh, that we almost had to win every game. And uh, the older players had their meeting about how important these games are. And I think that motivated them. It, it, it put a fire in us to just go and smash everyone and that's what I think we did. This famous clip with the Karim and Sarfar talking, you know, to the national team players in, in the dressing room. Is he the is he the guy, is he the leader in the dressing room for the players or uh, are there several ones? Uh, how do you see that dynamic? Uh yeah, so he's one of the older players but he's one of the captains too. So he he's one that usually speak more than others. Him John Bach and uh, Taremi, I think they are talking really good. And at the same time, I think it's a good mixture because uh, of a little bit older and a little bit younger. And uh, they're talking good and they really motivate us. And they, they're, they're still humble in their way to talk. So it's, it's really nice to hear. The games against Syria and Iraq last month, they went obviously very well. We got two results and we needed them against Iraq because we pretty much smashed Iraq. I mean, they, they had nothing for us, let's be perfectly honest. How did they go for you? Yeah, so the Syria game, uh, I started. I played 45. Uh, I, yeah, I, I think I played an all right game. Uh, not so bad. Uh, the second game against Iraq, I came in as a sub. Uh, same thing. I think I had an impact in the game and just try to always go forward and try to kill the game and just try to do my best. And yeah. uh, the, the, the team did really good both games. And it, it's the same here in uh, with the national team. It's a really tough competition between the players because you can feel like the, the young players, they're really there, they're hungry, they're motivated and keep pushing us and if we don't do our best, then they are there to take our place. For sure. Um, and then obviously next month, we have uh, two matches against UAE and South Korea. What do you expect? Of course, South Korea have a very strong team. How, how do you think Iran will do? Yeah, we just have to keep in the same, like, to just, because right now we're in a really good space. We have a good confidence. We just need to keep keep pushing ourselves and just, you know, like a, like a machine. We just need to Keep doing our thing. Sure, we hope that you get two big results. Next question I have for you is, who are you close with in the national team? Of course, Abed Zadeh is one of your, your closest friends, but I think the fans want to know who, who are your kind of your closest friends in the national team? I think I have a good connection with everyone. Like, I, I feel like my Persian is getting better and better. Of course, I'm, st I'm still not good enough, but I can speak with everyone and I'm joking with everyone all the time, every day. But the closest is, of course, Amir. I'm, I'm with him every day. But I, I can sit with everyone. I can sit everywhere. So I don't have any problems with that. Fantastic. Just about Amir. We talked about this several times in the pod. And for me, I believe uh, Amir should probably be the starter for a national team soon. I know maybe you don't want to answer that. But how, how do you see his his progress? You know, he's, he's a starter for a team that's doing really good in, in the second league in Spain. How do you see him and in his development in the last years? Massive, yeah. Like, since he came first time to now, he had a really good progress and I'm, I'm really happy for him. He's just getting better and better still. And But I, I can get really motivated and really happy how, how good his mindset are and the energy is give out. Even though we don't play, it's really it's a it's a good good feeling for everyone because he's always there to push everyone. Even though it's it's a hard place he is in because, like you said, he's playing, he's doing really good, still not getting that chance that many people think he deserves. And uh, but it's it's really hard. Uh, we have really good goalkeepers and they're doing good, and you just need to like. Sometimes, sometimes life isn't fair, but you just need to to fight and just yeah. And lastly, obviously, on the national team, before we finish our fan questions, what is your goal of the national team now? Of course, the World Cup is coming up next year. Asian Cup will be the year after that. 
what do you want Iran to achieve in these competitions? Yeah, for me, the goal is just take each game by himself. You know, I can't think too much in the future. I don't think it's a good thing to do. So I think just the next game, next game, next game, and then whatever happens, happens. But the dream, of course, it's to play World Cup every time, to be in the group every time. And then from there, try to go through try to come first place or second place in the Asia always be number one always always in the tor- Asian tournament try to win it if not win it try to come to the final that's the dream we hope so man we really hope so let's put the fan questions uh, Pejman so this is from uh, at Majid Bala 85 the best player you played with and against played with I have to say Gael Kakuta tell us more about him very quickly because I don't think many people know him so I played with him in Amiens it's a player uh, like the technical ability I've never seen that in my life before and for, for those who don't know it's uh, it was one of the biggest talents in the world before uh, I think he moved to Chelsea when he was 15 16 years old and then got a big injury uh, but still he got that Uh, I'm just so amazed by the the technique he has, the ability of how we can control the ball, drive with it, just shoot everything. He is the best player I ever played with, for sure. The best player I played against, I think, in the World Cup in Russia when we played against Spain. Uh, I think Isco uh, is the best player. I've, of course, I played against other players too, like Mbappé and PSG, but. The game I was in, and the the best player in that game, I think it's is cool. That's cool. That's maybe two two answers yeah. nobody expected. I like awesome. that. That was really good. Now, kind of similar question: who who surprised you the most in the national team? Now I, I must say Gaidi. Yeah, he's a fantastic talent. We want to see him play in Europe, though. By the way, that question was asked by Sahan Salari, one of our guys. Next question is from At Legioner today on Instagram. He asks: uh, When you were playing against Brighton. Did you chat with Graham Potter at all? Yeah, yeah. After the game, we had a good, uh, good like chat. We were talking a, a long time actually, and for me, I, I was so happy to see him and so happy that it goes so good for him. I think they have a game today, and if they win that, then they're in first place. So I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm really proud of him and his team, and I'm I'm really happy for them. Yeah, they're doing really well. And the next question from Hatam. Underscore Daddy 1980. Uh, your favorite game for Iran that you played? It has to be against Morocco in the World Cup. It was on its way to an another very very good save from Alaresa Beiranvan. Iran to play it and it's an own goal. Would you believe it? What a finish to this game! The kiss of the ball. The huh? famous kiss. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. We yeah. actually on on International Kissing Day we actually put a picture of you. <laughs> Kissing the ball, <laughs> which is pretty funny. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So, so that game, like the first game in World Cup against Morocco, that goal, the atmosphere, like everything. That game is, I, I will never forget it. Cool. Oh yeah, I think you were there, right? No, no, I didn't go to Russia. I was too young. Uh, I was, I was a baby. <laughs> <laughs> too young. Yeah, I was there. It, it was a cool atmosphere. This is from at Samuel Godos News, so it's like a fan page. How, how do you prefer living in in England compared to to France? I mean, the weather is what it is, and France is France, you know. But how is it? Uh, no, I, I I really I really like to live in England, especially London. It's one of the best cities in the world, so I'm I'm, I'm really happy here. Without a doubt, I would say London or England. Fantastic. This is from 29 United. Your reaction to you know when Arsene Wenger praised you after your game with Arsenal against Arsenal in the Europa League? Yeah. Uh, he's a marvelous player, you know, technically, uh, tactically, uh, and uh, uh, I was impressed by him. Uh, and overall, I believe that uh, collectively, the, the team who plays good football. You want him on the team? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we are not in the transfer period. Give me a little breather. <laughs> it, it was a big, big moment for me. I'm very proud of it. I'm just, when I think about it, it can make me sad that I haven't achieved more than I should. But, of course, when I think about it, think about what we achieved as a team in that period, um, I can get goosebumps and 
just be really happy. But of course, what he says, uh, a big coach like him, uh, uh, a, a real legend, it's it's a big thing for me. Fantastic. Okay, last two questions. Uh, one comes from Khashoyar on Twitter at Zam Football. He asks the PGPL players, the Persian Gulf Pro League players that you've played with in the in the national team. Um, what do you think of their qualities? It's much better, much better than I expected. Some of the players that plays in Iran deserves to play in Europe, in, in my opinion. But at, at the same time, maybe, maybe they would struggle to play in Sweden. Maybe they would be the biggest star in Sweden. It's, it's really hard to say. Last question, quite a, an interesting one. We actually got asked it by three different people at Sports News, at Projigo and at uh, Rayhan Edge. RJB uh, on Instagram. They all ask, "What is your favorite Persian food?" <laughs> without a doubt, they want to know. They want to know. Lubia Polo, fantastic. Yeah, without Lovely. a doubt, but of course, like the, you can't take away chilo kebab from anyone, so it's the best food in the world. Lovely. But yeah, Lubia Polo, I can eat it every day. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you make it yourself? Did you make it yourself or no? No, no, no. I would be just disappointed if I do it myself. <laughs> Come on, man. Use, use YouTube, man. You got all these tutorials online. It's not hard. There's so many, a, there's so many Persian one. restaurants here, so yeah, it's better yeah. I just do it. Ah, fair enough. All right. Thank you so much for your time, someone, for coming on Global Zan Podcast. And best of luck for the rest of the season and with the national team. Thank you so much. And it was really happy to be here. So, Pejman, thanks again for coming on. Appreciate your time as well. Thank you. Okay, so... We ask you if you could subscribe to us on podcast platform you're listening on YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, SoundCloud. Follow us on social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Visit our website, globalsandpodcast.com and we'll be back very, very soon with more podcasts and more interviews. So stay tuned. From myself, Arialo Verdi, thanks for listening to our podcast. Take care and stay safe. My name is Saida Zatolay and you're listening to the Golbezan Podcast.